hello and welcome to the first video in export into paperback. Now when we looked at export into ebooks it was just a few mouse clicks and this is because ebook formats be it Mobi or EPUB are very quantifiable. It doesn't matter what your word count is or the formatting you've used in your book. EPUB and Mobi are always the same when you export. That's not the case when you export to paperback. When you export to paperback, there is simply too many variables for, pay, uh, for Papyrus Author to handle everything, which means you're going to have to do quite a bit of formatting yourself. Now, when I used to do this formatting in Word, it could take me a day to do the formatting. With Papyrus, that's not the case. Even with me blathering away to you to explain how to do this, I will export a 215,000 word book in probably half an hour. I could actually cut that down to 20 minutes. Also, when I was using Word, if anything changed along the way, for instance, I had to change the overall book size in terms of physical size, everything would be thrown to the winds and I'd have to start from scratch. With Papyrus Author, again, that's not the case. Um, Papyrus Author handles the formatting for paperbacks really well. So there are a few steps involved, but if you follow the next two videos, you're going to end up with a very professional looking paperback. So that when you export to your pod, which is a print on demand service, and that can be Amazon, uh, Create Space or Smashwords, you will always get a great finished product. So with that said, we're going to jump straight in. The first thing I always do is I save two versions of the same document because what I don't want to do is accidentally um, edit the, the document that I'm exporting to Kindle because the two formats, the format for ebook is very different to paperback. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to this save as and I'm going to save this as uh, Longthorn Paperback and go save. Adopt new name. Okay, and you want to make sure that you're working in your paperback version of your book from here on in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need to set up is the page size. Now, to do that, you come up to Document, Layouts, and you come down to Paper Format. Now, depending on your, at the moment, I'm set as A4. Now, generally, most pods, most standard paperbacks would be 6 by 9 Because there's so many words in my book, I need to make it slightly bigger because there's a limitation, I think, of 800 pages or 900 pages to most pods and I exceed that at this size. So I'm going to choose 6.69 by 9.61. But as I say, the normal size is 6 by 9. But I'm going to choose this one. At this stage, you want to make sure all of these are zero for all your margin sizes, OK? And I'm going to go Apply and Apply Format. So that will adjust all my page sizes now to that 6.69 size. The next thing I want to do is adjust the margin sizes. But before that, I'm going to make it so that I can actually see these pages side by side. So to do that, I'm going to come up to View, Document Display, and I'm just going to say Two Pages and close and the reason I'm doing that is I want to watch these margins as I change them because it's vital with paperbacks that these margins are correct so I'm going to go back again to layout so that's document and layout and this time to page layout now you want to make sure that double-sided document is ticked because obviously you want it printing on both sides of the pages and you want to mirror right and left OK. Right. So the outside margin, which is the right hand margin, stays at 0.5 inches. And again, I'm working in inches because Create Space and Kindle, um, Kindle Direct Publishing work in inches. 
imperial, you can look this up in centimeters if you want. Now the left hand margin is 0.5, the margin itself, but then you have to allow for the gutter. Now the gutter is the portion of your paperback that is taken up by the spine. The bigger the book, the bigger the gutter. So you need to look this up yourself because this will vary. Um, mine has to be 0.95 um, inches. That will allow for the margin and the gutter. So that's the side margins. Now the top and bo bottom margins are always 0.75 inches. And again, these are just uh, measurements I've looked up. And I want to make the footer and header areas 0.5. Um, you'll see why this is um, in the next video. Okay, so that's the page setup, and then I'm going to go apply. Close. And it's adjusted the margins, and you can now see that the inside margins are larger than the outside margins, and they're equal in size. So that's looking all good. Now what I want to do is I want to change um, the title. You, you might not have to do this if you had the correct working title, but as you can see, I can't change that because this is part of the metadata. So if you need to change the, the main title um, and the name, for instance, it's done again through documents and document properties. Okay, so there's been an update since I first made this video. So what you're about to see about the... Uh, metadata of your book can now also be accessed from the new uh, author menu. Now from this menu you can access everything that's relevant to you as an author but also from my project you can access stuff to do with your metadata and your book titling which is the bit that we're about to cover in the next part of the video. It also explains why uh, some of these uh, entries that you've seen in the video are named slightly differently. Uh, for instance, in the upcoming part of the video, I'll talk about table of contents, which in the older version you had to access from indices and directories, but now is directly available from within the document tab. Okay? And you're looking for front matter. Now I want this all uppercase and I just want it to be Longthorn. And I publish under Ben Brown. And apply and close that's now changed uh, the title of the book and the name to the correct title and if you look down here it's done the same here I now want to position this correctly now if I just keep hitting enter it will move it down the page but the trouble is if you just use enter to position um, your your text when you're doing pod, it can cause problems in the print. So you actually want to position this by going to paragraph and special paragraph formatting. And I want this one 180 points down the page. And if I go apply, it's then moved that to the correct position. So if you want to reposition any of this text, you have to do it, um, or the correct way of doing it, is through paragraphs, and special formatting and what I want that to be I, I'll put that 180 again and apply and as you can see that moves it the correct distance down the page if I just hit enter it can like I say it can cause dramas um, in the final product I'll put that 180 down and apply and close um, so right, another thing you need to make sure is positioned correctly is your chapter heading. Now I've actually already positioned all my chapter headings correctly, but if you haven't, again you would go to paragraph, spe special paragraph formatting, and it needs to be 76 points down with a 36 point space after it. If you click apply, if you clicked just um, change here, it would only change this one chapter heading. By clicking this, it will change all your chapter headings throughout your book. Close. Um, now, the final thing that you must make sure of is that 
for paperbacks, you need to make sure there's a page break between each chapter. If you haven't already done this, you will have to go through your book and insert page breaks in between each chapter. I've already done that, um, so I don't have to do that now. However, there is one place I do want to insert a page break, which is after the copyright here. So I, the reason I'm doing this is I always like to have a table of contents in my book. Um, it isn't essential. It's just a good thing to have. It makes it, again, just for a little bit more of a professional um, look to your book. So to insert a page break, you have your uh, text marker where you want to insert and you go to insert and page break. So this is where my table of content is now going to appear. I don't want it to be bold, so I'm going to turn off bold. Now to insert a table of contents, you go to document, indices and directories and table of contents. I want it um, where my current cursor position is. I want page numbers always, but hyperlinks never. And the reason I don't want hyperlinks is again, it can mess around um, with your um, pod file that you upload and I'm going to go insert content and close and you can see it's inserted the table of content now it's saying chapter one is on page nine this will change later that and I'll show you how to do that that should say page one pa your book should always start uh, page one of your book should always be on chapter one okay so now I have my table of content, I'm going to insert another page break so that I get a blank page after um, uh, my table of content. And I want my next title page to be opposite chapter one, but you don't show your name and other stuff within um, this page. You just have the name of your book, the title of your book. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hit delete again and again and I want to delete that and there we go that's how your book should look the chapter should always be on this side and the page before it should always be the title of the book right so now that we've got the pages in the right positions and everything else we're going to address the page numbering issues which, like I say, it shows it's starting at page nine on chapter one, but you can't see any page numbers. So you come up to documents, show page numbers, click show page numbers, and you want it in the footers and sent. Well, you can have it centered or in a margin or out a margin. It's up to you. And you go apply. And you can see now that the numbers have appeared. And again, chapter one is nine. We want this to be... Uh, one so we're going to go to page numbering and we want the first page to start on I think that's around about minus seven I'll click apply yes so by adjusting to say that we want it to start on minus seven so it will remove the first pages and put your page number one on chapter one and you can see the page numbers I'll close that now and close have disappeared from all the pages before chapter one. You will probably just up note, it's automatically updated um, the table of contents. I just spotted a small error. That's coming up as a heading. I don't want that as a heading. So I'm going to change that so that when I go back to the table of contents and I go right click update, it's removed that um, heading because that was an incorrect heading okay so now the table of contents is perfect the positioning and formatting is perfect the page numbering and positioning is perfect so at this stage you could actually export this book book to your pod and it would work perfectly fine okay so that was the first of the paperback export videos now, as I say, you could at this point export straight to your pod uh, by following the steps that I outlined in the PDF video. It would work fine. 
In the second video, I'm gonna show you a few tweaks that I use and that I think make your paperback look a little bit more professional. So until next time, catch you later.